Yeah, I think you're going to see two camps. Uh, I guess it could be three camps. There's a neutral camp in there too, Wilfred. But ultimately, I think companies like Apple, given what's going to happen with the street relative to where ASPs are going, clarity on that should be a positive. Now, that's not until next week, but I think that that should be a clear outlier here in terms of performance going into the print. Google this week, they have this uh, European uh, new approach here in terms of selling Android. That could add 3 to 5 percent to annual earnings. I think that would be a positive. And then on the flip side, we think about uh, Amazon. It's a different type of investor that's thinking about these earnings, more critical to earnings. So that may be a little bit of a headwind. And uh, Facebook, I'm, I'm in the camp that they're going to have more tough news coming out in terms of engagement. And so I think you're going to see that kind of a split, Wilford. Jason, which one are you most optimistic about? Uh, you know, that's a good question. I mean, as far as the companies are concerned, I think all of them are doing very well if you look at them broadly speaking. Um, and I, I don't think any one of these companies are going to be made or broke just based off of one quarter because they have such, such secular dynamics at play here. But as far as the stocks, looking at it over the shorter period, you know, those that have sold off the most probably have the most uh, to gain in terms of a throwback rally if they get if they have a really bullish report. So obviously we look to something like Amazon that's down 13 percent off its highs. Intel is in a bear market, down 22 percent off of its highs earlier this summer for a variety of reasons. And, and Alphabet is down 13 percent. So I think if any one of those uh, companies have a good quarter and beat expectations, there's certainly some upside uh, ahead. Gene, I wonder just how exactly to read um, the weakness in some of the big tech stocks. In other words, it's not necessarily just the case that, you know, earnings expectations shifted around that correspond very well to what the stocks have, have done in the near term. It seems almost as if the market is telling you either how kind of crowded some of the stocks became or essentially, you know, over-owned and now we have to worry about other things like macro and, and yield. So what signals are you going to be looking for in this quarterly numbers to tell us whether that uh, that stuff matters more or less at this point, and we can actually start trading on the uh, on the numbers again. I think there's a psychological hit that we've had over the past month in terms of given the uh, vast outperformance among these large cap tech names, it's understandable that investors are kind of on pins and needles. That doesn't get uh, necessarily solved on any given one quarter. But to answer your question, what are kind of the key metrics that we're going to look for? Each company is slightly different, and I think that they're going to have different roads. Again, with Apple, it's going to be what the ASPs are in iPhone unit growth. That should give investors some confidence that this is not just a product cycle story, that there is more of a sustainable shift to Apple as a service. In Google's case, it's the ad revenue number. As long as they can keep that, Google, in our view, is the oxygen of the Internet, and I think investors should be uh, reassured by that. And in Facebook, obviously, it's going to be this engagement question. They have these new privacy controls that have been rolling out across Europe. Now they're going to bring them to the rest of the world. And how that impacts the critical user growth number, whether it's on Facebook proper or Instagram. So each company is slightly different, but they all consistently have one uh, key issue that I think investors are going to hone in on to, to feel more comfortable about owning these longer term.